going to start our tour here on Oglethorpe Avenue, named for our colonial founder, James Edward Oglethorpe. By the time Oglethorpe was 37 years old. We're going to start our tour here on Oglethorpe Avenue, named for our colonial founder, James Edward Oglethorpe. By the time Oglethorpe was 37 years old, all you see on your right here, this is our Cultural Arts Center, dedicated earlier this year. And the big building beyond that on the right is our Savannah Civic Center. Lots of musical acts, all different kind of activities take place in that building all throughout the year. Folks, we're headed east on Oglethorpe Avenue, named for our colonial founder, James Edward Oglethorpe. All of these streets in the district either go east, west, or north, south, so it's very easy to get around. Now the dormitory owned by the college, this is called Oglethorpe House. But before it was a dormitory, it was a downtown motor inn. They purchased the building from the downtown and people turned it into a dormitory. On the left, the Jetson Center for the Arts, our modern art museum, dedicated in 2006. It's open seven days a week. And coming up on the right here, the Red Brick Building. Believe it or not, this building was actually picked up and moved from the other side of the street back in the 1980s when the Juliet Gordon Low Federal Building went up. Part of our historic preservation process. And the big red brick building on the corner here, this is the old YWCA, the Young Women's Christian Association. It's now condominiums. But this is where young ladies had come to Savannah looking for work. They'd stay at the YWCA until they found the job. We're going to cross over Whitaker Street next. Whitaker Street is one way south. And it is one of the few streets where you can go all the way through the historic district without hitting one of the squares. <laughs> One of the few streets, Whitaker Street. Coming up on the right here, this is the Independent Presbyterian Church. And this is church number two on the spot. The first one burned to the ground. Lots of fires here early on in the colony. Rebuilt in the 1880s by the Scots who came here as mercenaries to help defend the colony against the Spanish down in Florida. Scottish Monument straight ahead in the next meeting here. Anybody see a movie called Forrest Gump? <laughs> if you've seen that movie, you remember the very beginning of that movie, there was a white feather that came floating down from a church steeple. And this is the church they use right here on the right, the Independent Presbyterian Church. That steeple is 227 feet tall. It's the tallest steeple in the historic district. And if you remember the movie, that white feather came floating down from that church steeple. By movie magic, of course. Landed at the feet of Forrest Gump, who was sitting on a bench straight ahead, right behind this Chippewa Square sign, waiting on the bus to go see Jimmy. That's where he would tell his life story to anybody who'd sit next to him. Told the one lady that his mama told him that life's like a box of chocolates. She never know what she's going to get. The bench stood right behind that Chippewa Square sign throughout the entire movie. They had to move it to the History Museum, though, because kids kept jumping on it with skateboards. So now it sits in the Savannah History Museum, the Forest Gump Bench. This is Chippewa Square on the left, named for the Battle of Chippewa in the French and Indian War. Straight ahead, another historic church. This is the First Baptist Church. And this is the oldest standing church in the city of Savannah, built in the 1830s. There are older congregations here, like the Independent Presbyterian, but the church is either burned and got rebuilt. But this is the original First Baptist Church, 1830s. And when General William Tecumseh Sherman got here in the winter of 1864 on his famous march to the sea, some of his troops actually attended services in that church, the First Baptist Church. The only church that remained open during the occupation by General William Tecumseh Sherman. On the right, this was once a single family residence, one of the many mansions built with that cotton money. Notice all the wrought iron around this home. Wrought iron was a sign of wealth. The fence in the front is called the Fence of Poets and Presidents. Each one of those panels has a medallion in the center. 
and in the center of the medallion is a profile of either a famous poet or a past president. That's called the Poets and Presidents Fence, and you'll see that fence in other parts of the city. Coming up on the right on this home, a couple of cast iron examples. These are dolphin downspouts on this home, and they are original to the home, 1831. Wow. You'll see those throughout the district as well, dolphin downspouts. Folks, look to your left in the center of the square and you'll see the founder of the colony. That is General James Edward Oglethorpe himself. That nine and a half foot tall bronze statue was sculpted by Daniel Chester French, who also sculpted the Lincoln statue in the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. You see Oglethorpe in his full military gear staring down at his enemy down south in Florida, the Spanish. By the way, all of our military statues face the enemy, as you'll see on the tour. Coming up next, this is stop number two, the old Savannah Theater. This is the oldest continuous live action theater in the country, originally built in 1819. However, this is version number four, but two of the original walls are still located inside this theater. People like W.C. Fields, Oscar Wilde, and Sarah Bernhardt actually performed here. This is stop number two, the old Savannah Theater. There'll be another trolley by each one of these stops approximately every 20 minutes. Stop number two. Oh, you're getting off here, sir? Okay. All right. Well, thanks so much for touring with us. There'll be another trolley by every 20 minutes or so. Thank you. Now, Oglethorpe wrote the charter for the colony. And in that charter, he placed four prohibitions. The first prohibition, at first, there was no hard liquor allowed in the colony. Only beer and wine was allowed at first. The second prohibition, no lawyers. <laughs> Oglethorpe didn't like that prison system in England, and he didn't allow any lawyers. Third one kind of surprises folks. At first, there were no Catholics allowed in the colony. Not because he didn't like Catholics, he just knew he was gonna have a war with the Catholic country of Spain, and he didn't want to have anybody that had mixed loyalties. The fourth one also surprises folks. At first, there was no slavery allowed in the colony. Georgia was the only one of the original 13 colonies that at first did not allow slavery. Oglethorpe was kind of an idealist, and he thought slaves made men lazy. It wasn't until long after Oglethorpe left for good that slavery was allowed in the colony. Oglethorpe stayed in Georgia approximately 10 years, went back to England, married a wealthy heiress, and never returned to the colony of Georgia. Slavery was not allowed in the colony until 1754, when Georgia became a crown colony, long after Oglethorpe had left for good. By the way, all four of those prohibitions went by the wayside at some point in time. No hard liquor, no lawyers, no Catholics, and no slaves. They all went by the wayside. We're going to turn here on Bull Street. Bull Street is the dividing line in the historic district. It separates east from west. Everything on my right is west. Everything on my left is east, and we're headed south on Bull Street. Named for Colonel William Bull, a civil engineer from Charleston, who helped Oglethorpe lay out some of the streets here in the district. On the right, the Sixpence Pub, an authentic British pub. Anybody see a movie called Something to Talk About? Julia Roberts and Dennis Quaid? <laughs> well, if you saw the movie, this is where she caught her husband, Dennis Quaid, having dinner with the other woman. <laughs> <laughs> they had it out right there in the street. Something to talk about. <laughs> now, that like movie in Forrest Gump, just two of the many movies that have been filmed here over the years. The original Cape Fear with Robert Mitchum, Gregory Peck, and Polly Bergen was filmed here in Savannah. Burt Reynolds may rest in peace, filmed several movies here, including Gator and The Longest Yard. Lots of history movies filmed here in the district as well. Some of the more recent movies you might remember. SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> Sponge out of war. The longest parades in the country. It lasts for about three and a half hours. No parade this year, though, due to the coronavirus. The first time in over 100 years. No St. Patrick's Day parade this past year. Hopefully we'll have one next March 17th. 
Coming up on the right here, the Moorish looking building. This was once a showroom for Henry Ford's Model T Fords back in the day. And coming up at stop number three, this is the Sorrell Weed House, said to be one of the most haunted houses in the city. Oh, it's a ghost here in the historic district. They even do ghost tours here in the evening. This is stop number three, the Sorrell Weed House. And I think we got another guest coming on board, folks. <laughs> Actually attended parties in this home to you right here, the Sorrell Weed House. The statue you see in the middle of Madison Square is Sergeant William Jasper of South Carolina. Jasper was killed in what's known as the Siege of Savannah when the Colonials tried to retake the city from the British in 1779. It was a failed attempt and over 800 Colonials were either killed or wounded and less than 100 British soldiers died. One of the bloodiest battles of the Revolutionary War took place not too far from here. Never hear about the Siege of Savannah, though, because we lost that battle. <laughs> you see Sergeant Jasper taking a bullet there while he's holding up the colors. On the right, the Green Meldrum Mansion. When it was built in the 1850s, it was by far the most expensive home ever built in the city. Built by an English cotton merchant by the name of Charles Green. And when General William Tecumseh Sherman got here in the winter of 1864 on his famous march to the sea, Mr. Green let Sherman use his home here as his headquarters. Sherman stayed in this home approximately six weeks while he waited on supplies to come down from Boston to resupply his 62,000 Union troops. Savannah was the only city that was spared by Sherman on his march to the sea. Everything else burned to the ground. The Green Meldrum Mansion today serves as the parish house for St. John's Church back there. The big red brick building you see coming into view, this is the old Savannah Volunteer Guard Armory, built in the early 1900s by the Savannah Volunteer Guards. They left the building in the 1950s and it stood vacant until the Savannah College of Art and Design was founded right here in this building. Still serves as the headquarters for the college to this day. This is just one of over 50 buildings that's been restored by the college. But as you can see, the cannons on the side of the building give you an idea what the original purpose was. The Savannah Volunteer Guard Armory. Folks, look in the wains here to your right, and you'll see what's called carriage houses. These were built on the back of these fine mansions for the people to store their carriages in the evening. All these mansions built before the age of the automobile, and it was horse and buggy days back then. All these streets were still dirt. And this is where the people store their carriages in the evening. You'll see these old carriage houses all throughout the district in the wains here. Crossing over Jones Street, said to be one of the most beautiful residential streets in the country. It runs east to west all the way through the district. The wide brick paved street is covered by a canopy of live oak trees. And homes on Jones Street sell for a million dollars plus. <laughs> very, very prestigious place to live, Jones Street. In fact, some people say that's where keeping up with the Jones comes from. <laughs> Straight ahead, Monterey Square, named for the Battle of Monterey in the Mexican War. The monument you see in the middle of Monterey Square is to Count Casimir Pulaski of Poland, Polish-American Revolutionary War hero. Pulaski was also mortally wounded in the Siege of Savannah, October the 9th, 1779, one of the bloodiest battles of the Revolutionary War. Pulaski is said to be the father of the American cavalry, and Pulaski's bones are said to be buried beneath that monument. And this is Monterey Square. On the right, this is called the Twin Sisters House. And the story on this home, it was built by a fellow who had twin daughters who used to argue all the time. So when he presented the home to them, they stood outside for hours and argued over who was going to get which side. <laughs> the twin sisters out. Coming up next, this is the Bursa Williams Mansion, and this is the centerpiece of the book and the movie Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, a true story about Jim Williams. Williams was a very wealthy antique art dealer here. He restored this home and he was living here when he shot and killed his companion, Danny Hansford, in that lower left-hand window. Jim Williams went on trial four separate times before he was finally exonerated. 
He always admitted he shot him, but he said he shot him in self-defense. Ironically, though, shortly after Jim Williams was exonerated, he had a massive heart attack and died in that same room. The home is now owned by Jim Williams' sister. On the other side of the square, the Mikveh Israel Temple. That's a Jewish synagogue. A group of 42 Jews arrived here about five months after Oglethorpe. They'd been turned away from Charleston. And against the wishes of the trustees, Oglethorpe allowed them to stay. That's home to the third oldest Jewish congregation in the United States, the Mikveh Israel Temple. On the right, the white brick building, this said to be one of the last, if not the last, of the huge mansions built during that cotton boom. This one built in the early 1900s by a shipping magnate by the name of George Armstrong. He built this home for his wife and one child. The gates around this home are replicas of the gates around Buckingham Palace in London. These people had lots of money <laughs> used as an attorney's office for years. But about a year and a half ago, they sold the building to a private individual who's turned it back into a single family residence. <laughs> Over 30,000 square feet, the old Armstrong Mansion. Straight ahead is Forsyth Park, and you're looking at the Forsyth Park Fountain. That fountain was purchased by the city of Savannah out of a mail order catalog in the 1850s. It's modeled after a fountain in Paris, France. And this is Forsyth Park on the right. This is the central park of the city. Wow. And probably the most popular so park in the city as well. Over 30 Forsyth, acres. Honey. Named for John Forsyth, the former governor of Georgia. And at one time, Secretary of State for the United States of America. This is Forsyth Park, the central park of the city. Folks, we're on Gaston Street now. Gaston Street separates the historic district from the Victorian district. Everything on my left is historic. Everything on my right is Victorian. The Victorian era, everything from the mid-18 to early 1900s. And the historic, everything before that. <laughs> Lots of beautiful homes on Gaston Street, as you can see. We're going to turn up here at the stop sign, and when we do, we'll be in the Victorian district. Everything from the mid-18 to early 1900s, the Victorian era. And we're headed south once again. All of these streets, they either go east, west, or north, south, so it's very easy to get around. <laughs> Laid out in a grid fashion, the original plan of Oglethorpe. On the left, the big yellow building. This is this was the old WTOC television headquarters. WTOC was the first television station to come to the city in the 1950s. They moved to the outskirts of the city about 30 years ago, and today this building is owned by, guess who? The Savannah College of Art and Design. Now the building owned by the college. Over 50 buildings downtown owned by the Savannah College of Art and Design. The old TV tower still in use by the school to this day. And we're gonna turn up here on Hall Street. Hall Street is one of the few remaining brick paved streets here in the city. These brick paved streets were put down right after the age of the automobile. Most of them have been paved over with asphalt, as you can see, but there's still a few of these old brick paved streets that still remain here, put down right after the age of the automobile. This is Hall Street. Look to your left here, folks. This is called a mansion on Forsyth Park, a five-star hotel. It's kind of old, doesn't it? It's only about 20 years old but it was built to match the existing building on the corner here, the old Caton Mansion, another Victorian style home built in the early 1900s. This is what, this is the, ho the hotel restaurant today, but this is what the hotel was patterned after, the old Caton Mansion on the left. And this is the practice fort. And today it serves as president of the college, Ms. Paula Wallace major force here in the city, the Savannah College of Art and Design. On the left, this is Forsyth Park, over 30 acres, one of the most beautiful parks in the country. You get a chance to walk